I think about this game too much. So, in Chapter 5, there's a couple of conversations you can initiate between paired characters. They're pretty short and don't have too much substance, apart from maybe one. They're just a nice little reward for the player and send off the characters. However, only some pairings have them, and because not all these pairings are good, many of them aren't seen too often. So why don't we change that? I'm going to redesign the dads so that they're good for the mothers they have conversations with. I define good as such. The quality of the kids made by this pairing is not significantly less effective than any other option for said mother. Basically, as long as there's not another dad I can look to and say, he's better for her, it's good. For example, in a vacuum, Alec is a good pairing for Loxus. He's got Pursuit, a decent strength growth, and B Swords. However, Beowulf almost completely outclasses Alec, with his slightly higher strength, better sword rank, and a cost, which is a much more useful skill than Nihil. As such, under my definition, Beowulf is a good pairing, but Alec isn't. Someone like Noish is also a bad pairing. Though he provides something more unique with a good set of combat skills, these don't make up for the lack of Pursuit. Ideally, unique and interesting dads are the goal, though they still need to be a solid option. I'll go through the dads one by one, explain their issues, and then what I changed. So, let's get started. Noish wants to pair with Eren and Lachesis. He's good with Eren already, but rather weak with Lachesis, because she really does want pursuit. So I decided to take inspiration from a dad who already kinda works in both pairings, Alec. As described earlier, he's solid with Lachesis and Nihil becomes a pretty good skill on a flyer. Alex stills his weaknesses, but Noish already has an advantage over him with his moderately better growths. To top it off, I'm going to give him one more thing. Minor Nova Blood. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense, and I'm lowering Noish's base growths to negate the blood boost. It's just for the Lance rank. It's a small thing that benefits both sides in a unique way. To start, it boosts the daughter's growths by a bit. Which isn't much, but it's in the best areas. Fee then also appreciates A Lance's before promotion, while Nana gets B as a paladin. The kids he makes now are mostly familiar. Dearman and Nana get the pursuit and strength they want, with the pinch of Nova Blood to spice it up, allowing Nana to use the Brave Lance, which can be a huge booster of combat if desired. On Eren's side, Fee gets a lot from this, with solid strength and defense, Nihil allowing her to ignore one of her weaknesses and Lance Blood allowing her to inherit and use the Silver Lance, which is good money and the highest might weapon she can wield at that point. With that, I think we're done with Noish. Sylvia needs a holy weapon, or some strong utility skills to actually have an effect on her kids. A holy weapon isn't quite in the books for Alec, and Bridget also likes skills, as well as the swords he already passes down. So I settled on giving him Charm and Life. Charm is a really nice way for a unit to provide non-combat support, and life adds a good amount of durability to a unit. Life also meshes well with Miracle, since it lets you manipulate your health. I can't say these skills are particularly powerful on these characters, but they're all nice to have, and most of the kids don't really need anything else. Life on support units means if they take damage, you can spend your healer's turn healing combat units, and making use of charm can be really helpful. For Arden, we can again look to a character who's good in both pairings already, Noish. Both the mothers have Pursuit and just want a dad with good skills and some decent stats. Arden is basically just good stats, so we just need to toss him some skills, and we can give him something unique to a dad as well. Wrath. I think Wrath speaks for itself. It's a powerful skill that's fun to use, and both Ira and Aaron's kids make good use of it. Tilchu needs two things, a good magic growth and Pursuit. If she doesn't get one of them, she's going to need something else big to compensate. For example, some good skills and a holy weapon. You could consider Vantage Wrath and Paragon in a similar light, but while they're probably enough to make up for one of the weaknesses, they can't make up for both. The solution thus seems simple. Buff Lex's magic to make up for it somewhat. It's a little out of character, but it's what Tiltu needs. On the Iris side, things won't change. Paragon is still making them solid and unique. They might be a bit better at using magic swords, but that's about it. Tilchu's kids play much the same as well. They just hopefully actually kill things with Wrath now. I actually think Azel isn't that far off being a decent pairing for Aideen. Pursuit makes Lester usable, even with low strength, and getting rescue for chapter 4 is a unique selling point. 
You can also get it a bit earlier than normal in Gen 2 by having Claude pass it down. Azel also gives Lana excellent magic, and while not necessary, high magic on a staff user can open up some interesting options. He still needs some help, but he's not hopeless for Aideen. Unfortunately, it's hard to buff Azel since he's already a great choice for Tilchu. Giving him something like Adept or Cost would help him out on the Aideen front, but would push him even further above Claude and Lex for Tilchu. As such, we need to buff him in such a way that doesn't help Tilchu, and the obvious way to do this is to buff his strength. This will make Lester moderately more effective, which may be enough to push him into viability. Much like Lex, the kids don't play much differently, Lester just hopefully does a bit more damage with higher strength, and Tiltu's kids don't care at all. Unless you're doing something niche like pairing her with Claude, Medir is clearly the best pairing for Aideen. To try to pull him down a bit, I'm going to replace his Acost with Adept. This may not seem like a nerf, but it does make him a bit weaker for Aideen, without doing the same for Brigid. This is because of how the hero bow works. It effectively gives the character Adept with a 100% chance of proccing, meaning Adept becomes meaningless on a brave weapon user. After that though, we still need more on the Bridget side, as he's barely holding on to being decent even without Beowulf overshadowing him. So I'm going to give him minor Balder blood. Sword's blood is greatly appreciated by Patty, as going from C to B is a big jump. He's still the best dad for Lester, just slightly worse without a cost. On Bridget, he fits into this weird role where on top of giving both kids adept, he passes down Pursuit and Sword Blood to Patty, making it much easier to train her. However, since he lacks Sword Inheritance, she's still stuck with the Sleep Sword when joining. I could do a third Sword Pursuit Dad for Lachesis, but I want to try something a little more unique. One thing that Nana can appreciate a great deal if she can get it is Broggy Blood. Getting this in the base game, though, requires a complete sacrifice of their combat from Claude. Do's stats work much better for them, so if he had Broggy Blood, he might be a more appealing choice. Bargain might be a little strong at that point, though, so we need to give him some new skills. For that, I've chosen Critical and Life. Broggy Blood also necessarily increases his res, since base growths can't go below zero. Critical is always nice, especially when you get a plus nine promo bonus to skill. And life adds a lot of bulk to a character, meshing well with charm and pushing them into the role of frontline support unit, shipping, taking hits, and buffing their allies. My changed version of Alec has this pair of skills and was surprisingly useful early on, even with far less strength and no critical. On top of that, Nana having access to inheriting and using stabs like Restore, Physic, Recover, and Warp adds a lot of options to her utility. So I think it carves it a unique, more support-orientated playstyle for Dermot and Anna. I've already explained why Adept doesn't help on Lester, so we can drop it for another skill, Bargain. Now that Dew doesn't have it, it's all Jamka needs to stand out. It puts Jamka in a unique spot for Aideen, where he helps both kids. It provides bows and solid stats to Lester, making him decent, and Bargain is a skill which can help staff users quite a bit, since they have trouble getting money. On Bridget's side, thieves really appreciate Bargain for the money manipulation, and Faval is an expensive weapon which he may need to repair. Basically just do in base game. Holland already needs some catching up, since Critical is better than Luna in most situations. Noish in the base game and do now overshadow him, and Wrath Arden is also something to contend with. To start, Acosta is a skill that works well on him and his kids due to his high health. His current blood also doesn't do much for Ira. All they get is Larsay reaching her skill cap a couple levels earlier, and the glitch where you put Balmung on one of them, which I'm not going to consider in this. So I'm going to trade it out for Minor Holseti. This merely has the effect of boosting Larsay's speed growth by 15%, which helps more. On top of that, it means that he isn't at odds with Madeira over Bridget as a Swords Blood dad anymore. With that speed, along with the high skill and HP, Holland focuses on the percent activated skills they'll have and while not as consistent as Wrath, they're easier and safer to make use of. Lewin's good, whole set he's strong. I considered nerfing him, but decided against it. Not much else to say. Beowulf in the base game is the best option for Loxus, which is the only pairing he cares about. However, I'm going to make a minor change to him to differentiate him from Noish. 
I'm going to reduce his defense growth and raise his speed growth by 10% to 20 and 40 respectively in comparison to Noisha's 40 and 20. The kids are basically going to play the same as the base game. However, I think it gives him a decent dynamic with Noish. Beowulf puts more emphasis on Diermud with a bunch of speed activated skills, while Noish favors Nana more with the slightly higher growths and lands rank granted by the Holy Blood. They're similar, but unique enough, I think. Even with Duga named Broggy Blood, Claude still stands in the Adine pairing thanks to the rescue staff and his good magic. Sylvia's kids also get a unique staff in Valkyrie. However, for Tilchu, as described earlier, her kids need good magic and pursuit, or something else big to compensate. Claude gives good magic, but little else. The one staff rank isn't particularly useful on Denny. His excellent resistance is nice, but definitely not good enough on its own. Miracle Wrath has a lot of the same benefit as Vantage Wrath. It's better if the enemies don't die in one hit, if there are enemies who can't be countered, or your hit rate isn't high enough to hit consistently. However, it's harder to set up and only works on the first turn it happens. As such, it's unique from Vantage while also still being good. To top it off, I'm also going to give him Critical, which any high skill characters can appreciate. Critical and Miracle aren't really enough to have an impact on Lester, and definitely not on Sylvia's kids. But Tilchus now get a plethora of things to play with taking on and killing hordes of enemies with Miracle Wrath, doing a bit better when above 50% HP with Critical, taking magic and status staves with high res, and maybe using some fancier staves with Tinny. And with that, we've balanced all the dads with conversations. Sorry, Finn. It's not perfect, and it's not the only way of attempting this, but I think it does an okay job of balancing the dads out. So, is the game better? now that the character-based pairings are good, or at least decent? Well, balancing a character has many facets, especially in FE4. Changing a dad's aspects doesn't just change their kids, but also the dad themselves. Some of the characters are significantly altered, which changes not only how they play, but how players perceive them. All the holy blood I added and moved around, for example, has no story reason for existing. It's there purely for mechanical reasons. Lex and Azel have buffs to stats they don't use, which is just unusual, and Noish and Alec play completely differently. Noish is just a buffed Alec, and Alec is now stuck to the role of frontline support unit. Looking at the base game, it's clear that the dad's attributes were designed with their own balance in mind first, potential kids second. Balancing for one area requires sacrifice in others. This exercise had a very different design philosophy than the base game. And while it's enjoyable to plan in theorycraft, it's mostly just a fun gimmick. If for some reason you want to try out this version of the game, there's a patch in the description. It should work on versions using Project Naga's translation patch.